Guys, look, disappointing to be out of the Champions League. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but we are still in Europe, so there's a lot to play for out there. That being said, if we were to lose to Sarajevo, find ourselves in the Europa Conference League, there might not be the worst thing that's happened. Villain and welcome back to Grindavik on the Impossible Dream. It is season five, episode six, and today we face Sarajevo, hopefully over two legs to see how the first leg plays out. And uh, well, if we win, we're into the Europa League uh, league phase group phase thing. If we lose, we're into the Europa Conference League. Now, as has been pointed out in the comments many, many times, and I 100% agree with this. If we end up in the Europa Conference League, that is not the end of the world because we're going to be a lot more competitive or a chance to be a lot more competitive playing in that than in the Europa League, which we saw last year, was just a little bit cut above what we're, what we're capable of. So that is, uh, it's really win-win. You know, if we win, fantastic. We win. If we lose, fantastic. We're in the Europa Conference League. Now, we do start in the medical center, and that is because we've had a bit of a serious injury here to young Damien Ormark. So now he's broken his collarbone. So he's out for six to nine weeks. That is a fairly sizable chunk of time given this part of the season that we're in and he is becoming an increasingly important player for us as the backup to uh uh what's his face the capiello you can see he's training on very very nicely indeed his bravery he's taken a hit after uh after the broken collarbone so we'll just have to sort of tell him to suck it up a little bit but yeah it is it is very very definitely a blow and we have other players that can play midfield obviously but not as well as uh, as mr or Markson, so he will be missed but on better news we've had our youth intake and it says it's a good intake. I actually think it's a very good intake because I think the players that are good are actually going to be quite good for us. Now, the top man here is this guy, a no-nonsense centre-back, uh, fairly professional, sorry, fairly ambitious, a left-footed centre-back as well. And you can see already tackling and marking that is good enough to be, <laughs> to be in our first team. Uh, some good mental attributes there. And physically, he's not too bad either. So I, re I really, really do have high hopes for him. And to have a good young centre-back that is going to be a club-trained centre-back for league registration purposes, that is absolutely brilliant. Uh, if we go down here, we've got some top talents in goalkeepers. I think uh, this guy might challenge Morty Mortensen long-term to be sort of the, the club-trained number one, although we'll need two of them at least. So that's good that we will have at least two of them. Again, a fairly professional goalkeeper keeper uh we've got a right winger here who is right footed which is always nice look at those physicals very very pacey which is always good to see in a winger um decent determination a fairly professional uh, personality and can dribble cross first touch it's all not too far away so that's all good news uh deep lying playmaker this guy is uh, again 16 two star already uh fairly ambitious Physically is not ideal, but can already got good technique, can tackle, can pass. We can work on everything else there. And um, yeah, again, I think he's going to be a good a good player for us. And uh, the striker here, who is arguably one of, <laughs> one of our better strikers at the club already. Now, low determination is not great, but everything else there is, is quite good. Good off the ball movement. I'd like better composure, but we can work on that. He can finish. He can head. He's got decent jumping reach. The strength is something that'll need to be worked on. But again, I think there's a very, very useful player there. And we've got a couple of others here that we'll have to wait and see that might turn out or might not. This guy is very good mentally. He can tackle. And that is kind of it. So we'll see what happens with him. And uh, we've got another guy here that is in a similar situation. He's a good mental player good first touch which always gives you a chance technique and passing is okay but there's a lot of holes and he's unambitious as well and then the others here will have to wait and see what kind of happens but as i always say i like to rename these guys after the patreons if you are a qualifying patreon then uh then then let me know if somebody here right somebody here grabs your fancy the other thing i've been thinking about doing uh, and this is probably as good a time as any to mention it. As I've been thinking of it, and uh, I don't want this to come across as a money grab. Hopefully, if you've watched the channel long enough, you'll know that I don't really mention Patreons and that unless I have a reason to. But what I'm thinking of do doing, if if there's a demand for it or people want to do it, is sort of opening up the... Um, the the player attribute to to channel members if but people sort of for the same tier so right now it's just the 99p for, so just people have another way of doing it i think 
correct me if i'm wrong in the comments i think the tier in in patreon it's the third tier i think it's a tenner a month so what i was thinking of doing is if i have like the five pound or 4.99 and 9.99 option i think i'll be in channel memberships and and have the same perks as patreon gets if that's something that people would be interested in if you let me know this this isn't a i expect you to do it but just if you think it's a good idea to do that um and then i obviously i can do that and you can have you know, you can have the, the regens named after you as well. Um, yeah, that's just uh, just a by the by. Just let me know if that's something that would be of interest. The reason I will talk talk about the reason later on uh, during the game when nothing's happening. Uh, we do have one game to catch you up on. That is in the Icelandic Cup against Grotta. Now, I think the final's actually ready to go. It's just waiting for our side of the draw. This was the quarterfinal against Grotta. Uh, if you can pick the two teams apart, you'll do well. But let's see what happens. Somebody scored goals. We took the lead when Habedatsen's free kick was finished by Monty before Odin Bagley sealed the tie late on. So finally we got a win, finally we kept a clean sheet. It was a much, much better performance from us, and Stefansson played well as well, even though he didn't score. So that's good, he's obviously, he's warned, I've warned him, and we've had talks, so obviously something's got through to him. Let's hope that that form continues. And the young left winger there, Habedatsen, played well. Cissé still getting up to speed, and this was the game where obviously Ormark got injured as well, or Ormarkson got injured as well. So, yeah, all in all, a very good uh, a very good win. Now, our next tie is the semi-final, and that is against Breeder Blink, with Viking awaiting for us in the final. So, the Breeder Blink tie is between the two Sarajevo ties. Ideally... Sarajevo will be done and dusted. We can put a good team out for against Breeder Blink and the second leg will kind of, in its way, take care of itself. So let's go and have a look at this second tie. Second tie. First tie. First leg of the tie. Uh, you can see everybody else that's in the draw there as well. And uh, let's go and see what we're doing here. Now, we are expecting them to be a 4-2-3-1 formation. And this is the team that we are sending out. It is Andreasen in goal. Sanchez, Andreasen, Antonsen, and Matheson are the back four. Sayas, Turpitz, and Capiello in midfield. Viva and Turco are the wingers. And Gadini will be the man up front. Now, we do have Rocky back from injury, but he's obviously very short of match practice. And uh, everybody else there on the bench is looking quite good we've also been able to uh what's the word register our chinese left back now so he's an option as well if we need him okay so we can see the team sheets there a lot of itches on that team isn't there so uh we know they're not completely grayed out as well okay let's just say there's no pressure on you here i think i made that mistake against molder although as was pointed out in the comments molder just looked a much much better side than they did last season um, yeah, so what I was saying before, it's 442 in the end, so they've changed that. Uh, what, yeah, what I was saying in the end uh, about the Patreon and, and channel membership, the reason that I did Patreon initially was A, I don't think channel memberships was a thing, uh, and also I, I kind of knew what Patreon was, I didn't really understand the channel memberships, and uh, I guess from a personal point of view, I get a better cut off from Patreon than I do from the membership, but it's not necessarily about that. Um, so. Yeah, just let me know if, if, if uh, expanding the channel memberships is something that's going to be of interest. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, be, it's become obvious that that's, people do, some some people prefer to do memberships than Patreon, which is absolutely fine. If somebody's generous enough to be able to support me, uh, I am not stupid enough to not be able to give them a, a way to do that. So, oh dear. Well, that's not how we were supposed to start. Uh, we are away from home, obviously. But yeah, that all looked a little simple, didn't it? Just a ball into the box. And, well, Andreasen just didn't go with his man, basically. And his brother couldn't bail him out. So, as much as I say it wouldn't be the end of the world if we ended up in the Europa Conference League, while the game's on, I don't like losing. And so <laughs> I kind of want to want to win. But uh, anyway... That's an aimless ball into the box. Easy for Andreasen. Rolls it out for his brother. Denny Sanchez now. Come on, boys. Let's go to get this ball forward. There's a good one for Gadini into a little bit of space. Oh, he's had a poor first touch, but he wins it back. Gadini! Oh, he's come back. And we are level very, very quickly. It was a little bit scrappy up there, to be honest. But what he did do is he stayed with it. And in the end, he was able to uh, get the better of his defender. This touch there was a bit loose, wasn't it? But the defender tried to dwell on it, and uh, goalkeeper looks like he got a hand on it, but not a strong enough hand to keep it out. And that is 1-1. Nice and quickly, back level. Uh, then playing 4-4-2 doesn't necessarily change too much about what we want to do. The only difference is some. I do sometimes like to have an extra man at the back just to uh, so we go three at the back, so we've got that, that loose man 
uh, if there's a if there's a man coming through from midfield or whatnot. But um, we'll stick with this for now because we've kind of set the team up to play this way, and uh, we'll have a word to the scouts later. They got it wrong. There's a ball forward. It's one. Gardini brings it down. That's a little bit better control, isn't it? Forward there for Matheson. Viva now. Viva rolls it in for Gardini, and it's just not quite, just not quite able to get uh, cleanly into his feet. Crossfield pass for Sarajevo now. Oh, Viva does well, but Sarajevo again win it back. Antonsen with the header. Look at the space Capiello has. Wide there for Turco. Turco kicks it into. <laughs> it's scrappy. It's wonderful football to watch, isn't it? This is this uh, the Europa League or is this like uh, Van Vanarama North? Here we go. Viva's in. He might be offside. He's played it back in. Oh, and it's there for Luke Matheson who gets his second of the season. I don't know that what he was doing there. He arguably shouldn't have been that far forward. And I don't think he expected the ball to land at his feet either. But after some wonderfully scrappy play, it's the sort of goal you'd expect at the end of it, isn't it? Goalkeeper's made a save, and Luke Matheson just sort of almost out of surprise tucks it home. And it is now 2-1 as we approach half time. And that is very, very nice indeed. We'll give him some praise. We'll go into the dressing room relatively happy with our 45 minutes. And uh, we will say, don't get complacent out there, I think. Uh... Turco as a winger isn't ideal. He's basically out there out of circumstances because we just we we can't well we could but we need to unregister somebody in the league. He was the unlucky man, and I just think Gadini Gadini is the better striker of the two. So as things stand right now, and I mean when to be honest, when Rocky comes back, arguably he goes in there and plays wide on the left. Here we go, Gadini's in again. Gadini, oh that's a stunning finish. Fausto Gadini is beginning to look like he's going to be a bit of a star for us. It is now 3-1. And there we start turning our attention towards Breeder Blink in the cup. Gadini gets it forward. Good finish past the goalkeeper. And uh, yeah, suddenly that scoreline looks a lot better now, doesn't it? Maybe it was just a little bit of a not concentrating at the, uh, at the start there, conceding early. But we've come back brilliantly. And Ken Gardini getting himself a Europa League hat-trick now. Uh, we've got Turpinson and Viva are the two that aren't playing particularly well. Capiello with a ball into the box. It's headed away. Matheson is there. Matheson to Turpinson. Wide for Capiello. Can he find Viva? He goes back for Matheson. Chips it in. Back post. Turco. And is that going to be ruled out? They're appealing for offside. Was Turco offside? Vaz going to check it, and he was not offside, so it is a goal. Nikola Turco, Nikolo Turco even, gets his ninth of the season. And he did well to stay onside, actually. And uh, I think it was a lot closer than it looked when the ball was initially played in. He was sort of backtracking. How close was it? Yeah, Gadini, if anything, is the man that's offside, but he's not really involved, though personal opinion if they're offside inside the penalty area then you should be given offside but uh that's just me so this is relatively comfortable it to be fair away from home it's very comfortable isn't it so what we might do is we might show the bleed breeder blink semi-final depending how we're doing on time we might do a three game episode we'll see how we go that was brilliant though boys well done so fortunately or unfortunately, it looks as though we might be playing Europa League football again. At least we'll get a gauge of how we've improved from last season. Uh, Mulder didn't favorably compare, but we'll see how we go. Guys, I'm going to come back for the semi-final against Breeder Blink, and let's see if we can make ourselves a cup final. Okay, welcome back. We have Breeder Blink in at the semi-final of the cup. Let's go and have a look and see what we're doing here. You can see the league there as well. We're off the top, but uh, KR have played multiple, multiple more games than us at this point. Again, we're expecting a 4-2-3-1. I guess this time we'll believe it when we see it. And uh, this is the team we're sending out. So Andreasen stays in goal. We've got up here, as you can see. It's uh, Ming Jiu at the uh, left back. Monty, Adel Steinson, and Huggins make up the rest of the back four. Turpinson comes in to play the deep line playmaker role with Halkson and Capi yellow in midfield. Cissé and Rocky are both lacking a little bit of match sharpness of the wide player. Stephenson goes up top. We've got options on the bench if we need to change thing, things. Uh, Gadini is uh, the main uh, gold man there if uh, Stephenson decides he's having the day off. All right, so we can see the team sheets there. Uh, I'm trying to think who scored against us. This Jamie Henderson got a goal, I think, last time we played them. Uh, but anyway, let's not worry about last time. Let's go out there and impress me. Let's say that uh, just play your natural game and uh, we'll be okay. Now, of course, when we played them last time, absolutely destroyed we got. It was 3-0. 
so let's hope we don't get a repeat of that. Uh, the reason I've got Turbanson playing here is that my plan is that then in Europe, uh, Sayas will come back in. We have other players that can play sort of that central midfield role. And I'm thinking Carrison's coming back from injury. He could play the advanced playmaker role in place of Capiello. So I'm hoping that, uh, that that'll all sort of work out for us. And hopefully we'll win two games. We have, of course, the three goal margin to play with against uh, Sarajevo now. This is, of course, our first of two games at the National Stadium. As the header there goes just wide. I missed whose header it was, though. Of course, with the Cup, the, the benefit to this game is that everybody's available. There's no You don't have to have players registered to play in this. Um, of course, the players that are playing are all registered anyway. And that is off the crossbar. And Adel Steinson hacks it clear. So chances at both ends early on. Um, I would imagine the, the winner of this would be a favourite for the final, but Viking are, are well, I mean, I find it really difficult to get a good gauge that the league seems to change up and down every season, which will probably happen until we get, um, if the league becomes sort of more established, you get more professional teams, teams that have money, and then uh, they'll probably start to get more of a pecking order. But right now, it seems, you know, you could be second in the league one year and relegated the next and it's happened i think uh who wasn't valor was it some Vala? someone got relegated the season after might have been viking up someone got oh but fh maybe someone got real definitely got relegated though all right well that's not been the greatest uh first half let's go out there looks like stephenson's having one of his afternoons off uh if there's anything we can do to try and improve things for him i wonder what we could do let's take it off past ball into space we'll lower the tempo we'll look for overlaps and see if we can, uh, yeah, get a ball forward. Rocky not having his greatest game. Cisse as well. Capiello. I wonder if there's an argument to say we need to move Capiello a bit further forward here and be a little bit more ambitious. There's a few too many yellow cards in that uh, in that lineup as well. All right, this is clearly not working. Okay, so we're taking off Stephenson and Rocky. On comes Havard Dartson, who has been, he's improving. He's been playing quite well for us. Also coming on is, uh, who else came on? Oh, Gadini, of course, up front. So let's hope that that gives us a little bit more of an of a attacking edge here. The one thing with Gadini is that he is good in the air as well. Uh, our left back is looking nervous, which isn't ideal. So let's take him off. He's on a booking as well. We've got Collar, the youngster, on the bench. I don't want to completely freeze him out of the team just because uh, Jan Yu has come in. I think my plan, perhaps, moving forward is now we don't want to concede a goal here, please, guys. Oh, off the line. Adel Steinson heads it clear. Gadini is there. Brings it under control. Can we get them on the break? He's got Cissé in front of him. Capiello is forward. Have we got anyone on the left-hand side there? Huggins. Goes back to Adel Steinson. Come on, boys. There's a ball forward. It's headed away. And are we going to come back the other way now? Turpinson needs to put in a clean tackle if he's going to put in a tackle at all. And that is over the top into the fans. And is this tie going to... I don't really have time for this episode for this to go to extra time. But that's exactly what's going to happen, isn't it? You try to be nice, do three games, and this is what they do to you. All right, that was terrible. So let's just tell them that and let's, uh, let's get out there. Let's... Just win the game, guys. You've done absolutely nothing for 90 minutes. And of course, what this is essentially doing as well is anybody playing this game, if it's going to go beyond the 90 minutes, is going to be absolutely destroyed when it comes to playing uh, in the second leg against Sarajevo. So that is, that's not going to be a, a thing that happens. Adele Steinson does really well there. And can we play out from the back? Eventually, it looks like we might be able to. Here we go with Collar. Gets it forward there for Havard Dartson. Turpinson to Halkson. Can Halkson play in Gadin? He's got a little bit of space. He goes wide to Cissé. Huggins is on the overlap. This is looking better. Just didn't play it in front of Cissé far enough, did he? And are we going to get done on the break now with Huggins too far forward? He gets back well. He's putting pressure on. Oh, he's gone straight through. And Jamie Henderson has scored again against this. And it's just... It's just falling to pieces a little bit when we get back domestically. It's it's a good goal, but between Huggins and Adel Steinson, somebody has got to stop. Adel Steinson, I think this might be his last year with us. He's not club trained, and I'm just not liking what I'm seeing from him. I don't think he's... Yeah, he's still playing on the cover. I just don't think he's, he's up to it. Monty as well. I think these two centre-backs will definitely look to upgrade on 
at the end of the season. They're just they're just letting us down a little bit. Here we go. Good ball for Gadini. And he can't find the inside of the post there. At least we've shown a little bit of intent. And I think what we might look to do here is uh, we'll raise our tempo up. We'll get rid of that. Get rid of that. And uh, we will be going to put a bit of pressure on them higher up the pitch. We'll go and get stuck in. We'll step up and hopefully... Yeah, we'll do a little bit better here. Let's try and encourage. It's now half time and extra time. We'll get back out there. And it's a kickoff highlight, which is something. Let's see what we can do with it. I do wonder a little bit too if if some of the struggles we have domestically is teams starting to play sort of differently against us. So there's a part of me that wonders if domestically we either need to go now with sort of the number 10 at all times and i tell you what we're just not putting tackles in there that is a stunning finish but capiello's having a nightmare we don't really have anybody that can play in place of him um all right we'll just bring bagley on i don't know what else we can do yeah it's just it's just not working. The other thing is if we... There, I know there was a suggestion a little while ago that we go with two up top. Um, the issue we have with that, of course, is is wide players, unless we go sort of a 4-2-4 four, a four, four kind of formation. But that is so disappointing. Beaten in the semi-final. So yeah, that's disappointing, isn't it? Very, very disappointing. And uh, we've got a little bit of cash, but that means absolutely nothing. We've slammed the team. And we'll be back to face Sarajevo. We've got work to do domestically, though, don't we? All right, welcome back. Now, we have a lot of bad news to catch you up on. Our goalkeeper is injured. It's a bruised head. He could, in theory, play. I will put him on the bench, probably. I don't... I don't want to risk him, though, I don't think. And uh, more bad news is that if we have a look here, we have had bids coming in for Viva. Now, unfortunately, I said that I'd accept uh, 250 grand and 50% of the next sale. Um, there's now teams offering 300 grand, 50% of the next sale. I've accepted that bid. Uh, we're going to try and get 350. We, you know, we've got a little bit of a bidding war. There seems to be three teams that are interested in him. I don't really want to sell him, but also he's unhappy. And if we can get you know, a nice sale out of things, 50% of the next fee, he could in theory go on and play at an even higher level. So it might it might work out okay. Of course, the issue is that we can't replace him now until the, basically the end of the season. So we would be ourselves a player short. But I think we could just about manage just about anyway let's have a look and see what we're doing here for this second leg we just need to avoid embarrassment and this is a team we're sending out arneson the backup goalkeeper is going to get a game he's lacking match sharpness hopefully do we go with monty montenson who has a little bit more match sharpness perhaps let's go with the backup though collar andreas and antonson and matheson are the back four sayas brim who is a uh, one of the club trained players he's going to get a game in here in central midfield just see what he can do carison is back from injury so he's going to play as the number 10 uh we've got viva could be his last game for us uh it's, it's august 26th in game so the transfer window in the rest of europe is coming up uh, to close obviously at the end of that month rocky will give him another game just to get some match sharpness we'll try him as an inverted winger this time not an inside forward turco he's our european player exclusively it's his last game for the club before his loan contract expires he has no interest in renewing it so a little bit more bad news there um the issue of course potentially is if we lose turco and viva do we find ourselves again in a situation where we're a player short my thought process is that sanchez could play as a left winger if needed so yeah that's hopefully hopefully we can we can manage all right, so we can see the team sheets there. It looks a very similar-ish sort of side for them, doesn't it? Obviously, it's all changed for us. Uh, we need to put on a show out there. No, we don't need to forget about the first leg and go again. Carrison is looking stressed. That's not ideal, but he should be fine. Uh, he's one guy that we've promised first team football to. Uh, now, he's a little bit annoyed at me because I didn't give him the first team football. Of course, the problem with that is that he was, he's been injured. So he hasn't been available to play, which is a little bit frustrating. Antonsen's another one. Uh, I promised him first team football. He was also annoyed at me. Uh, we used to come across this problem with, I want to say, was it Welders? Where what would happen is that we're sort of rotating. Roof is still looking pretty good. Uh, Yellow Lawrence, they're new, aren't they? We're taking over. Um, yeah, so what would happen is that because I'm rotating, trying to give uh, keep players fresh for Europe and whatnot, 
they don't play every game. And I really do wish there was a way to say that I'm saving you for the big games or, you're, you know, I, I, I'm managing your, your game time kind of thing. And then if they disagree with that, that's one thing, but it's not even an option to say. So I always find that a little bit frustrating. But anyway, um, what we really need to do here is not get uh, not get smashed. If we can score first, then you'd say that that is, uh, or should be anyway, job done. We've still got a fairly strong defense that we've put out. I don't want to take too many chances there. It's just a shame the goalkeeper got injured and Antonsen is there. Carrison, bit of a poor touch, put us under lots and lots of pressure. But we do get away with it. Let's maybe just go back to positive. One thing we haven't had, thankfully, is the right winger launch in two-footed uh, early on to get, send us down to 10 men, um, which is nice. Got a ball into the box there, and Arneson, let's say he had it covered. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to start, and, and if you guys have any thoughts on this, get a sort of a, a keep next year, get rid next year. Uh, like I said, I think our two center backs from the, from the, the cup game, I think we need to maybe look to get an upgrade on those guys. Um, don't allow complacency to just creep in here. Yeah, I think so. I think we do need to look to upgrade there. Yeah, I mean, it's one of these, isn't it? It's sort of everywhere we can upgrade. I'm becoming increasingly concerned with uh, Stephenson. He's a little bit too often. There's a ball, and it was a good knockdown from Andreas, and Rocky couldn't quite turn it in. Yeah, I'm getting increasingly concerned with the number of bad days that Stephenson's having. Oh, and this time, Andreasen can knock it in. It's his seventh of the season. It is 5-1 on aggregate now, and that should be that. Uh, Sayas is a booking away from a suspension. We do have one of the youngsters on the bench that should be able to play in there, so we'll give him a game. And uh, the other thing we might do, Rocky, again, not. Uh, we'll give Rocky the minutes. Uh, so let's hope that I haven't made that sub too soon. But good, Munson's another one that's come through the academy. Um, he's a good tackle up, so he should be okay slotting in back there and uh, and getting a job done. Turco with a nice knockdown ball through from Carrison for Rocky. Oh, he's just he's not match sharp, and it showed there, didn't it? Let's see if we can uh, not let them score on the break here. It looks like that's exactly what they're going to do, but the finish is not there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, at 5-1, it should be relatively comfortable here. Good, I'll try and remember to show you Good Munson. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's good to see the uh, the youngsters, that, that they, they are coming through. Um, we had a little bit of trouble negotiating with some of the of the youth intake. Uh, just wanting a little bit too much money for my, uh, for my liking. But next time, we should have another chance to negotiate with them and we'll be a little bit more flexible, perhaps. But... Um, yeah, guys that are sort of, I'd like to sign, but they're probably not going to, well, then they are never going to be sort of star players for us. Just wanting a little bit more than uh, that central defender wanted, which I didn't didn't particularly like. But let's see what we can do here. Another change we could potentially make with Antonsen not playing well is to get Triggy Magnusson on, who's uh, looking to be a, a very decent player for us. Antonsen, there's some nice calm defending. Back to the goalkeeper. And we go again. Antonsen, about to come off the field, of course. Uh, he's another one. If he's going to kick off... The problem is that these guys... I mean, I, what I do want to try and do is have sort of a good base of Icelandic players. I don't want to end up with, uh, you know, basically no Icelandic players in the team. But we're going to have those naturally through the league from registering players that have come through the, the club. Someone, oh, they're good. I miss Good Munson again. Someone like Antonsen, who's not actually a club trained player, he's taking the slot of someone that could be, you know, a, a, a basically anywhere from the EU. And if they're not sort of super top quality, then and they're taking up that spot, I don't see the sense in it necessarily. Matheson with a ball in, and it is Rocky with his tenth of the season. You forget how many goals he does score. It's a really, really good finish inside a crowded penalty area. Matheson with the ball in. Viva, if it is his last game, let me know. I think we're going to miss him. I don't, I don't think 300 grand is necessarily a brilliant fee for him, but what could work out very nicely is the 50% of the next sale. Um, and like I say, we, we're in a position with that we'll be able to find somebody else to go over there and play, and Rocky's got himself another one, and we are running away with this late on now, which is very, very nice to see. Maybe we give Viva, do we give him a big uh, a big send-off here? We could give Cissé some game time, we could give Havard Darts in some game time. 
I like that. Hammer Dartson is supposed to be two-footed, so we'll see how he goes over on the right-hand side. Uh, but thank you for your service, Fever. If you have to go on to bigger and better things, then uh, good luck. And if you want to stay, then brilliant. We'll keep you as well. But, um, yeah, if he wasn't unhappy, I, was, I thought I said seven minutes, but it's 7-1. Um, yeah, if he, if he wasn't unhappy, then that would be that would be one thing. But the fact that he's kind of itching for a move just makes me think, you know what, you can go. So 7-1 in the end. It was very, very comfortable. Bream with a debut. It looked quite good. Good Munson as well. I can finally show you him. Uh, you can see there, decent defensive midfielder. So uh, no, no real issues giving him some game time. But we've got a quarter of a mil, which is very nice. Uh, the centre-back impressed, which is always good. Nice thing, a centre-back get a goal as well. Uh, and we have got uh, another 2.9 million for getting into the Europa League. Our fixtures have been revealed, and I'm scared. Okay. All right, well, that could be a lot worse. Hadrick split at home. Uh, this team away is a bit annoying. Roma is a write-off. Dundee would be a nice one to get at home. We might be able to get something out of them at home. Away might be a little bit of an ask. So it's tough, but it's not horrible. I think Gladbach, Benfica away is a bit of a scary one, isn't it? Ren, Roma are going to be tough. But the rest of them there, we might be able to get something. You never know. But anyway, that will do it for today. A bit of a longer episode. Hopefully not too long. If you've enjoyed it, thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. We'll come back next time. Uh, we'll work our way down the league here. KR away is a massive one in the league because they're currently top, although they have played a lot more games than us. Uh, then we'll show Hadjuk split at home. Again, we might get something out of. Uh, but we've got a lot of league games between now and then. And we'll get an idea But at that point if this is going to be our league title or not. Also, we'll make this first call for viewers player of the year. Whoever you think has been our best player or your favorite player, let me know and we'll start to get that nominations list together. Until next time, guys, I've been Aussie Villain. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.